how that did occur. So that's why it's like that was kind of a common theme. Like that, but. Okay, so just kind of bear that in mind when when coming up with these topics. I think those individuals whom we have met with um, have chosen topics pretty much surrounding um, surrounding that. So I think we're in good shape as far as those topics that have already been established. But for those Perfect. of you who've not established a topic, just bear that in mind. So. I am so sorry, everybody. I forgot to hit record when we started. So just to recap, in case anybody comes back and watches this, Kai just very, very briefly talked about our regional events and getting those going. So apologies for anybody who ends up listening to this meeting after the fact. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> ah, that happens. OK, so <laughs> then the next topic I was going to cover real quick, guys, is Sinar. Uh, that is our tobacco compliance survey, which is now being uh, administered across the state. Uh, Winkleman Consulting is the person that's going to be doing this. Uh, he's hiring youth ages 18 to 20, and they're going to canvas 393 retailers across the state starting shortly, within a couple weeks, I believe. Um, you guys should have all received an email. Anybody who's related, you know, doing any work in tobacco prevention, it would have came from Abby, and it gave you guys the tobacco retailer list as well as a letter that you can hand out to tobacco retailers, just letting them know that, you know, this is a this is a survey that's done every year. Um, don't give them the exact dates. Actually, you won't know the exact dates because I don't know the exact dates. Um, but also let them know that there's some, ours is a survey, but, but the federal, the FDA does non, so they do enforcement, actual enforcement of $1,000 in fines. But just let them know to follow the law and card people and make sure they do the math on the ID. Um, we have to maintain a 20% or below a 20% failure rate uh, so that we don't lose funding. And this is all the funding that we're paid with with SUPTERS. It would be SUPTERS funding that we would lose if we don't maintain a 20% or below with our signer. So good times like, there. Looks like Jordan has a question. Yes, Jordan. Um. Yeah, my question was in regards to the um, regional meetings. So for those, I guess, like how is everybody getting together with their region to pick their topics? I guess in talking with like some from Central Valley, we kind of thought like Growth Partners was going to do like a meeting with prevention coordinators in our region to determine what a suitable topic would be to for our event and then go from there. But then that doesn't really appear to be the case. And then at our last in-person event, like it sounded like some people from our region were going to partner with a different region. So, I mean, we really haven't made any progress towards any brainstorming. So, I mean, we're way behind and I guess we would need even more facilitating from growth partners and I would be hoping and, and talking with Shannon that growth partners would at least get a pre-planning meeting together with people from region eight to discuss a list of topics or even hearing what topics other people in the region are doing because I mean we preliminary tried to throw out topics beginning of 2024 but there's been no suggestions or anything since so I mean, it's a little bit frustrating, I guess, on my end. And if at this point, like, I'm just going to take more of a back end role then and <laughs> just attend the event because I don't really know what else to do to get it to come together or even get a topic together for Region 8. Hey, and that's kind of how I'm feeling. Okay. So yeah, go ahead, Kai. That was kind of the purpose of me sending out that email on Friday is to try to group you all together, bring you all together so that we can do that pre-planning, set up a meeting, come up with a topic and and progress from there. So oh, perfect. Um, yeah. So that right. email that you got and everyone that was copied on that email is who who we are trying to group together. And I think there was about eight or nine of you that we tried to group together for that regional event eight. Now, if it's probably gonna come down to me giving it till Friday to see if I have any responses. And for those who have responded, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and try to set up a meeting with you all to go ahead and get the ball rolling. And that way you don't feel like you're behind. Yeah, Jordan, did okay. you get that email from Kai? Yeah, she and did. I responded she was to Kai and communicated that. I just that, put but something in the chat for Hank to, to you. just share. 
share what we decided to do. I don't know if okay. his mic's on. Um, yep. Thank you, Kai. I really appreciate that clarification. And now I feel like you and I are on the same page. And now I'm feeling a little less behind and appreciative that there's like support from you guys going forward. And we'll kind of be up to speed with the others in the state that have already kind of finalized some plans. So, OK, thank you. I yes. appreciate it. I'm up to speed. I yeah, no problem myself. myself. <laughs> yeah. And we'll get more meetings in place. So one of the things that we're going to talk about in that June meeting, in that in-person meeting, is this exact topic, is making sure we got everybody included and that some of the planning takes place and, you know, that there's responses to uh, those guys' emails and things like that. So you're not behind. Don't worry, you're not behind. It's, yeah. We so are for those <laughs> whom we haven't spoken to or whom we've spoken to and have been unclear, that was the purpose of those emails on Friday to just kind of pull everyone in together, get some things situated. And for those whom we haven't heard a, a response from, just kind of group you all together. Because like I said, the regions, we kind of looked at it regionally for who hadn't responded and tried to group you all together according to what makes sense, according to how the regions are laid out. So, but that's what we're definitely trying to work towards and, and get the ball rolling as far as that that goes. Perfect. Thanks, Kai. Any other questions on those events? Hank, we'll have you share what you're doing at our in-person meeting, if that's okay, um, because we're going to talk specifically about those regional meetings and getting more ideas and seeing what people are doing. So we'll have Hank share kind of what their ideas are during that, or if we have some time after this, we can do that. But Okay, any other questions about the Region 8 meetings? Okay talked about SINAR. Um, I will be doing an additional request to the state for some funding for more forensic scanners and possible possibility for more promotion with the ND tip. Um, please make sure to mute your lines if you're not muted. I am getting a little bit of feedback here, but okay, that's better. Okay, so yeah, so any, anyway, I'm gonna ask for some additional funding for forensic scanners and the promotion of ND tip. So I will let you know what we determine with that. We are gonna do a resource mailing on ND tip. So we plan on uh, mailing out some resources to all of the sheriff's departments across the state. So we want you to be aware of that and we'll let you know what those resources are and when those go out, because they might try to reach out to you to say, hey, we just got these resources, what are they for? Um, but we just want you, we'll let you know when that comes up, like when we get final approval and when things get printed and they start getting shipped. Um, we'll let you know, you know, ahead of time so that you know that's coming. Um, it's not On a lot of note, resources, but yeah. It ahead, might be a good time, Tom, to talk about the sub one, all your guys' requests. Some of you guys might have gotten some partial packages. Um, I know I gave some when, in our last in-person meeting or the SAPS meeting to who was there. Um, we're getting through them. Leah is working on a few more uh, partial orders that we're gonna send out. But on that note too, as Tom said, we are just waiting for the funding approval to go through for ND tip, and then we'll print that. So not only will it go to the Sheriff's Department, everybody that ordered ND tip, I still have your orders from that supplement one request and we will ship those out as soon as we get them in as well. So just kind yeah. of an update on that. That was that wish list I sent out to you guys is what she's referring to when she says sup one. We just have some of the funding that we have used up and we're still waiting on approvals. Yes. On approvals. And on that note, too, just kind of a heads up, um, some of the parents lead and the opioid stuff, I was not able to get you. We did plan on printing it, but we just got word that we're getting a creative refresh from our vendor this year for both parents lead and opioids. Um, so after this summer, everything will be with the new tagline, take care, be aware. Um, so once we get the refresh done, we'll probably send out another update, just kind of like we did with Speak Volume saying, hey, these products are available. We've got a new refresh. Um, so just be aware that when you get your boxes, you might not have some of the parents lead or the opioid, opioid stuff in it. That's just due to us doing a refresh on that campaign. All right, any questions about re materials, the free resources and materials? You know, moving forward with those, we talked about how we're going to subcontract with the vendor to take care of these orders in the, you know, we're working on that currently. I have a meeting with procurement and things to determine some final stages before we put that out to vendors. 
Um, so just know it'll be a lot more streamlined. We won't have to go through procurement to print things anymore, and we're just hoping that this vendor will just take get our orders and ship them immediately. So it will definitely streamline the process. Then we'll be this and, much of a delay. And soon, hopefully, I know I've been saying it for a while, but XCard is finally starting enhancements. So soon we will have the nice download button right there so you don't have to scroll and do all of that. Um, so hopefully by the end of the summer, you'll see XCart kind of get a facelift as well, um, be a little bit more user friendly. Anytime you guys have issues with XCart or anything, please reach out and I'll help you right away. Yep. Now I know with the forensic scanners, you guys have asked for some information or videos on how to download the data. And I have that. I just got that from the vendor. And what I'm asked him to do is provide the attachment. He forgot to do the attachment like a handout, but there's a video and then there will be a handout and I will send those to you as soon as he responds back to my email with that attachment. But it'll give you like a step by step on how to download the data off the forensic scanner so that you can report it to the state because we do need to know how many scanners. I mean, you know, how many IDs are being scanned and how many fake IDs are being captured. So. Um, any questions on that? Okay. We will once again be at the North Dakota State Fair in July. So we are booking our times and stuff like that, and we're getting on the schedule. It'll be parents lead and, you know, the normal stuff. We'll have Narcan and stuff there. Um, so we might be in and out during the weeks of the, the week of the July of the State Fair. So just know that. What else we got? NPN conference. I guess sent you the I get sent you the link to the NPN conference. This is the National Prevention Network conference. It's a really good conference for prevention professionals. Uh, they talk about a lot of, you know, SAMHSA updates. They talk, you know, they have different tracks about data and like different programs. So it is a really good conference and Sufter's funding would cover your uh, attendance. So just know that. It is in Tom Arizona is, in August. Tom is thrilled that it's in Arizona uh, in August. 120 degrees I saw is the average. <laughs> so if I don't come uh, back, you guys know what happens. It's at a very nice resort. I was really surprised at the the rates for this resort. Like there's a water park and all kinds of stuff. So it should be really nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. But she's going to be picking me up off the cement if I get a step outside. Tom's uh, just going to melt. That's yep. all. <laughs> all right. PFS update. So the Partnership for Success grant. Um, we asked for an extension on our community assessment that we had to do. Uh, this is because we had like, I believe, 30 some data sources that our evaluator was going through and he just has to do some tweaks to it and he has to get some capacity measures and things like that. Um, but we should know by the end of June who qualifies for Partnership for Success funding. So just be waiting for that announcement end of June. I know Tori has been very busy with this and she's been doing a great job at PFS. So. Um, I, I believe she's drafting some workbooks. We're working on a training and technical assistance contract because we are going to bring some technical assistance in for uh, the PFS grant specifically. Because again, this is going to be selective audience or selective target audience. So a little bit different than what we're doing right now. Um, any questions about PFS? Anybody? It is a five-year contract. It would be a five-year grant. It's in around about one hundred and twenty thousand or one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars per grantee per year. It's a much more, it's a more significant uh, grant award. Last five years. So. And just to clarify too, it will it will unless you're doing a completely different direction, it will replace Supter's funding for those individuals that receive the PFS award. So yeah. you Can't will either. Yeah, either even if it's say you want to focus adult on one and youth on the other, we're going to have to do yep. just the PFS one or the um, other. So when PFS does come out and we identify those communities, you will have the option to take PFS if you want to, if you're eligible for it or stick with the Supters grant. Um, what we'll do is we'll send out like a announcement that you're eligible. Um, it'll have all the information about the grant, kind of the scope of work, your contract deliverables, all of that. Um, and then we'll give you about a week to ask questions and about another week to determine if you want to take that grant or not. Um, so 
don't think that it's something that we just force upon you and you have to do it. Um, it is an option. We'll identify those communities and then give you guys the chance to ask questions um, and understand it a little bit better before you commit to that five year period. Yeah, because one of the requirements is a full time staff for PFS dedicated to PFS. So just like we did in the previous PFS, uh, we found that to be highly successful in getting the needle moved uh, when it comes to underage drinking prevention. So it'll be the same requirement, and that's why we're asking you if you want to take the opportunity. Another one that's so. a, a difference than SUPTERS is the PFS. We will require you to work with the coalition as well. Um, if you don't have one established, we'll help you start establishing one. But part of the PFS is um, partnership with coalitions. So. And that again comes from research. We know that if you have a task force or a coalition or a work group, you're more more likely to be successful in your efforts. Okay. So more information to come on that, you guys. Um, what are some other things that we're talking about? Uh, date for prevention. We're still trying to lock in a location and a, and a date for that. It's going to occur in December. As of right now, we are trying to get um, the event center but they have not been very good at responding. So once we get more information about a solid date and a location, we'll get that out to you guys uh, just as a save the date type of thing. But that is the day for prevention. What else you guys got? Callie, do you have anything with the Sufters contracts that you need to cover? Um, I guess the main thing is um, we got everybody's logic models and strategic plans updated to the grantee website. So if you want to go and check out what other grantees have done, those are links available to every everything that everyone submitted. Um, keep in mind that, like, especially after this in-person training, you guys are going to be working on your strategic plans. You might make some changes. Um, you don't have to necessarily submit every single minor change, but if you do have significant changes to your strategic plan, um, that's when you would send us a copy and we can go ahead and update that. So we just want to know basically if you're shifting direction in any way or you decide to change something because of, you know, you're evaluating over the course of this implementation period. If something isn't working and you decide to change gears, we just want to know. So if you do make significant changes like that, send us a copy. Other than that, you guys can go and should be able to go and view what everybody has and maybe get ideas from other people and, and kind of use those to your advantage. So those are all uploaded and ready to view. So thank you everybody for getting those to me. I appreciate it. Yep, any questions? Thanks, Kelly, for doing that too. Yeah. Absolutely. And like like Kelly said, like in this in-person meeting that we're having coming up in June, if there's changes, that's okay. That's what the strategic plan is for. It's just, it's a working document. It's a fluid document. It can change with what you determine, like with data and things like that. Because you might find that, uh, like Tammy said, you know, I don't have this in my plan when it comes to the forensic scanner. As of right now, she doesn't even know if fake IDs are an issue in her community, but she's hearing a lot about him. And if she ends up implementing this forensic scanner and all of a sudden they get a huge amount of fake IDs, she can absolutely address that in her strategic plan. That's when we can look at her strategic plan and look at modifying it or, you know, adding a specific strategy in there that's okay that's what we're looking for with those strategic plans again they're just a fluid document we want them to be a working document they can change uh, in the scepter's funding or in the scepter's grant we allow you or we want you to actually collect additional data to do just that just to look at what's going on if you hear something collect some data around it and see if it truly is an issue so you can get you can receive reimbursement for that data collection effort it should be ongoing so and then as far as reimbursements, um, everything has been processed by me up through the end of April and has been sent over to fiscal. Um, I apologize in advance. It's kind of this unfortunately the same story of fiscal just taking a little bit longer than we would like to get those reimbursement checks out. So I do apologize for the delays. Unfortunately, it's out of my control. Um, I try to keep up with getting this, you know, getting them processed as soon as I get them unless something is missing. Um, in which I always send an email letting you know, you know, hey, we haven't received a monthly report or something like that. So everything that I have received so far up through April has been processed. And on average, we're seeing it, what, take five to six, seven weeks even to get these things fully yeah. processed, which is unbelievable to me. But again, I looked at how many contracts we have. I believe just our division alone has over 150 contracts. 
So, and I think there's only, what is it, like six people in finance or five people in finance or something like that for the entire department or something? For the so, entire yeah. health and human services. Yes. yes. And we are just one division. So it's like, I get where there might be a little I bit know, of a bottom. A lot there, of but. times when I go to drop reimbursement files in their designated folder for all of finance, I'm seeing like <laughs> Thousands, hundreds of yeah. documents, unfortunately. So it kind of, yeah. Just so you guys know where things are at, um, if you're questioning a specific reimbursement, um, let me know and I can always follow up with them. Yep. All right, so server training real quick, I can give you an update on that. Um, the Safety Council has put together a media uh, promotional kit uh, that, or I mean, media promotion that they're going to be putting out. So you can be looking for that. I know that they purchased some media spots and things like that, and they're looking to increase the amount of people who take their online server training classes. So you might get asked about that. That would be through the North Dakota Safety Council. Um, they do have train the trainer courses available. She's going to give us some more information on that when it, when they're planned. Um, that's where you can send a sheriff's department or a sheriff's officer, police officer, even if it's a public health staff that you want to be trained in server training. Um, they will let us know when that one is scheduled and coming up. And then they also have some new guides and some new things that they want to do to the curriculum. They want to update the curriculum a little bit. So I will continue to provide updates as they come to me. Um, and that's on the server training program. Uh, we did get asked by DOT to do a presentation at the next um, Vision Zero conference. And we're thinking it would be North Dakota Safety Council would be a good one to have there to talk about the program and what they've been doing to it for the last year. So just be aware of that. Um, let's see, what else we got? The Behavior Health Conference. You guys know that that's September 16th through the 19th, I believe. You guys have all got to save the date. We are going to have some prevention specific um, sessions, I believe two or three. Again, those can be covered by your sufters. We'll get more information out on the website and stuff like that when it's available. I think they're they're putting out a, an agenda and some speaker bios and stuff like that. I know that they've been updating it with a few things. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You know, for that June meeting, I know that there's a conference that kind of overlaps with our June in-person meeting. That's okay. Um, we do our best to try to plan around some of those things, but it's getting very difficult, <laughs> so especially with how many grantees we have. So if you can't make it, just let us know and we can try to provide you or we will provide you with the, the resources and stuff after the fact. Um, and then that is at the Holiday Inn in Bismarck. Anything else, you guys? Just going through my notes here. Oh, it's my phone. We had the SAPS training. That was really good. We're hoping to have another one um, in February, I believe, or it could be closer to the end of this year. So just know if you weren't able to attend this most recent SAPS training, we will be having another one. They also host these across the state, other states. Like I know Montana has one, South Dakota. So if you want to take one earlier than what we can provide, um, there are some opportunities at other states and things. So that went over really well. Everybody who attended really liked it. Um, anything else, you guys? When's our next community of practice meeting? I think that's coming up. I can't remember, but. Oh, uh, a check in meeting is uh, 10 a.m. on Tuesday. So if you're part of the planning committee for the community of practice, I believe that is on June 11th at 10 a.m. We have that planning meeting. And then I think the actual community of practice is later in June. If I'm not mistaken. All right, that's all I have all my topics, you guys. It's kind of short and sweet unless you guys have some questions. Tom and Kelly, this is Steph Welsh. Could you stay on just a little after? I had a couple of reporting questions for this month. I'm not quite sure where to put something. Yeah, sure. of course. And you can even ask them right now if you want, because I know I've been getting a lot of questions about reporting. So, or well, not a lot, so, a few, just a few. My question is, we've been working with our city, um, our Chamber of Commerce and our city of Langdon on Music Fest for a long time, gradually adding um, policy. So it was kind of a free-for-all event. 
initially, I think we, we started in 2015, you could bring in outside alcohol, there was open container, it was, there was no IDing, there was no wristbanding, there was no any of that. Um, beer gardens were our ultimate goal, um, but in the interim, we were able to get some policy in place, signage, clear cups, IDing, wristbanding, all those things. Um, nice. Now, this last month, um, I had a Eagles Auxiliary member come to me about beer gardens, as well as the chamber. We had some discussion. They were going to work on it. Um, then I had a call from the city and the sheriff. And all in all, they had a city commission meeting. The city auditor was not in support. However, beer, a beer garden did pass for the Eagles Auxiliary. So it's not even the chamber. It's another entity. I didn't attend the meeting, but like did backup or background information to the mayor and the um, sheriff and the Eagles Auxiliary member, you know, gave them kind of the um, results of our stakeholder interviews, why it's a good thing, the kind of the progress we've been making and making this event safer, all those things. We're, do Is that physical design? Do we wait till the event is held? Is it modifying or changing and implementing policies? Okay, that's a good question. So like, depends. It, it depends on what specifically occurred. So did the the information dissemination to your key stakeholders, like the, uh, the yeah. lawmakers? Like I met with the sheriff, yeah. I met with the Eagles Auxiliary, I met with the city, I met, yeah. All that is reimbursable. That's meeting For, with key stakeholders. Right, yeah. Yep. And then if like there was internal policy changes that occurred, like if it was like, hey, now we eliminated the beer garden or we made the beer garden safer by doing this, that would be internal, could potentially be procedural change, internal policy change, could be a systems change. Uh, it just kind of depends. Like the best thing you could do is just give us an exact, this is what occurred. You know, like so, we changed the policy to this. Sure, the event has not happened yet. I was not at the meeting because I had a, a conflict. So that's why kind of all that meeting with stakeholders and grassroots support building went on. Um, not that it wouldn't have been good anyway, but so there was no beer garden at all at this event. There will be a closed adult only beer garden for the first time in years, probably wow. 15 years. Um, the event's not wow. till July. So is that yeah. like report that in July when it happens? And it went through yes. the city commission. So it was yep. like the city commission approved a beer garden. Yep. So report that to us when it occurred, like at, okay. at, in the month that it occurred. But that is so when it happens year. in July, and then what do you put in for a reimbursement amount? Um, we can work with you on that, but that would be definitely a policy change or a procedural mm -hmm. change. That's a uh, fifteen hundred dollars sure. just for that implementation of that. So when okay. that event occurs, without the beer garden, that's fifteen hundred. But keep track of all okay. the other stuff you just already did, like the meetings yeah. with your key stakeholders, the information you provided, um, the yep. signage, all that stuff is reimbursable separately. Than that policy or you know right. the system procedural change. If yeah, you and want, I will... Stephanie, if if you want, there's a there is a planning template that is specifically for policy. If you okay. want to use that to just track all of the activities that you're doing that's related to this, that can help okay. you kind of, you know, keep all the individual. You can still claim each individual activity, but it'll help. You, it might help you keep organized with the ones that are related to this specific like. Bigger picture bigger policy change. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because so far, mainly it's time and meeting with stakeholders. Um, I have offered if they need help with signage or um, fencing or some of those things for that first year setup, there might be some of those costs, but I think they're getting it covered. But it's unique because for Music Fest, we provide them some stipends to like take care of implementing those policies to like eliminate yeah the financial burden of you know some of those supplies and things. This will be different, I think, because it's it's a chamber member, not the chamber proper doing it. Um, so I might have separate costs if they don't take care of that. But let us know um, what your proposal is or what those might be. Because there is some yeah. things we can Let support that physical design. You know, like you talked about fencing. That's a potential that we could cover under physical design. You're physically changing that yeah. environment to, to, you know, keep the youth out. Mm -hmm. So that's potential. Yeah, and I should reach back and just see exactly. I think they were finding some volunteer help with some of that. Um, yeah. But I should reach back and especially signage. You know, if it's a first yeah. year garden, some really good signs might be helpful. Um, but yeah, it sounds like they have a good plan. It's an enclosed area, adults only, one entrance, um, you know, like some really good thought went into how they would set it up and where they would put it and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. that's great to hear. I, I would fill out that policy template that'll help you kind of plan and lay everything out. And then if you have costs that don't 
fit in one of the attachment items, you can put them in here and kind of ask for that pre-approval. Um, like different than the policy implementation. Yeah, 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 yeah. For any activities that you can match to attachment A, you can go ahead and put those on your report and claim those as is. And um, yeah, and that would be in the month that they're done. So the event itself would be in, you said July. It's in July, yeah. And ideally, maybe they'll find ways to cover it themselves with the profits from the beer garden. That might happen. You know, um, that would be really sustainable. That's my hope, but we'll see. If not, I've been wanting this forever. I'm very willing to figure out a way to pay for fence and fines, <laughs> even on my own. Well, good to hear. Well, I want to hear uh, like how it goes at the end. So, yeah, me too. I hope it goes really, really well and everybody's happy. This forever ago in the initial spiff, people said that this event had intoxicated adults and wasn't family friendly and they wanted to see beer gardens. Like, whatever that was, nine years ago or whenever we did that. It was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, progress is slow. That's right. <laughs> I did have one thing that just popped into my mind, and this is, I think I even forgot to bring this up to you, Tom, but um, for the forensic ID scanners, for those of you that are kind of renting them out to individuals for use and things like that, um, one of the things to keep in mind is privacy of the screen when those IDs are being scanned. Um, I actually had somebody just in kind of an offhand setting complained to me that that one of the places that they went to, and I won't say where, but they had that screen just kind of out in the open for everyone to see. So when they, those IDs got scanned, somebody could have been standing, you know, in the general area and seen all their personal information. So I figured I would take that and just kind of remind everybody to let businesses know that these should be, you know, facing staff members only, that it shouldn't be out in the open or positioned in a way so maybe the, you know people standing around won't be able to see any personal information that pops up on the screen. So just kind of a random thing where I got that comment and I was like, oh, hey, that might be something that we can just remind everybody to take into consideration. So it's it. I don't think it's a very common occurrence. I think it might have just been one person that was just uncomfortable with the fact of you know this particular ID scanner being positioned very openly, but something to keep in mind. Yeah, and there's a clear screen option on those. So like after you scan somebody's yeah. ID, you can hit a button and it clears the screen. Maybe yes. they just left it open, like the that screen was been. there and it was yeah, just right that there and they never been. cleared it. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of a best practices thing to position it, you know, more in a way that's more private and to clear the screen after the scans. So just to prevent any complaints or things like that. Does anybody, any of you have any other questions on any of the things we've covered or things we haven't covered? <laughs> this is Jen. I have a quick question about the screens. Um, is there ever an option to do, um, you know, when your phone has a, a darker a privacy screen built film mm -hmm. over that so people can't see? Well, I mean, I it would be nice is. if everybody would push the clear button. I know that sometimes when places are busy and they're, you know, people are standing in line, they want their drink and now you're moving on and, but just, uh, just a question. Yeah, yeah I, know I that bet there them. is. I mean, I'm sure you could find a privacy screen online if you just, I guess I don't know the measurements of the screens offhand, Tom. I don't know if you know, but. They're just uh, bet... Microsoft Surface uh, tablets. Would there be, would there be oh, a problem okay. if we added them to them. I, I don't want to, I mean, that they're not our scanners, they're yours. We, I would have no issue. No. With that. Yeah. Okay. They're not okay. permanent, you know, they're not permanent. They're just right. kind of, you know, I think they just slide in or, or you can tape them or whatever. I don't know how they're installed, but okay. no, I don't, I don't think there would be an issue with that. Okay. No. Thank you. Yeah, so hopefully if uh, the state approves my request, I'm looking to purchase probably 20 additional forensic scanners and then I can get those shipped out to people who request them again and I'll probably do a survey. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised at this rate if we have more forensic ID scanners implemented than any other state in the country. Oh, no doubt. The dealer or the vendor even said that. He said the no other state that? is doing what we're doing. Yep. That is fantastic. Yeah. I, I think you guys should be really proud of 
that work in particular on us being ahead of the curve. Yeah, yeah. The we have been contacted by other states asking us how we're doing this and yeah, how yeah. is it working and yeah, they want us to present on it at one point. I don't know when, but I've had to meet with quite a few different states. So and that's where your data comes in. You know, that's why it's really good to have that data because I can show them how many IDs are being scanned uh, and how many fake IDs are being captured by these uh, scanners. I, I know they're not perfect. I mean, sometimes they give us false results and stuff like that. But you guys are doing a good job of of getting that information out and troubleshooting that. So. Yeah, it's going really well. I, I can say that our tribes implementing these like with Hank and stuff, giving it to somebody on the in the on the tribal community. That'll be a first that I've ever heard of. So. The fact that uh, our tribes are actually implementing this is pretty amazing. As well. I know they don't detect tribal IDs, but uh, they will detect out of state IDs and things like that. Especially with the casinos and, and things that like they're they do a really good job of, de of detecting all the different uh, state IDs. I wonder if there's a way of working with whether it's the company or. Um, I mean, I imagine it would be the company, but contacting them on potentially implementing tribal IDs. I've talked to them about it and they said that it's too different, like the tribes being sovereign nations and things like that. Their processes for IDs are so different, like for tribe to tribe to tribe, they wouldn't be able to do it. Hmm. And the security features aren't the same as like state security features and things like that. And the processes of approving um, tribal IDs is different. So they couldn't verify, you know, if it's legitimate or not. So. Sure. And, but in the state of North Dakota, it is a requirement that it's a state issued ID uh, to purchase alcohol. So just be aware of that in state law, it has to be a state issued ID to purchase alcohol or tobacco products. Oh, so in that case, then yeah. really they wouldn't need to scan. Exactly. They would have to they have to scan state IDs Yep, because they are okay. the state approved liquor license um, as well as a tribal approved liquor license. They have to go through two layers of. Of approvals to get the liquor license. Got Just it. like any community, I guess, you know, and every community is like that. So with Tammy and Hank on the on Mardell. Oh, Mardell, text me or set, put your um, UPS address in the chat. I saw that you were on here. If you can put your UPS address in the chat, I have your forensic scanner that can be shipped out. Um, Robin asked in the chat if that's covered in uh, responsible beverage server training. Yep, it should be. Yep, because okay. they do have the current laws, and I I know I send them every every time they're updating their information. I send them the laws that that should be in the uh, training itself. Maybe I should go to first districts next server training. I haven't taken one in probably ten years since I've been a waitress, so maybe I should. Yeah, you might, yeah. my knowledge. You might want to. It's, June 11th. I should. June 11th. That's election day. Everybody go and vote in primaries. <laughs> I will be voting, yep. Yeah. I think I have my school board election today, so I have to go and vote for myself at, to run for school board. <laughs> and if you're wanting See. to know more about it, vote411.org. There you go. Gives you information on candidates and everything like that. Completely un unwork related, but just a good <laughs> a good piece of knowledge to spread. <laughs> OK, I got your information, Mardell. I'll try to get that forensic scanning to you shortly this week. I'm hoping to get that out. Hey, Mr. Tom. Yo. Um, would we want to coincide kind of with because I'm approaching the uh, casino. I have a meeting with uh, their director. Or the CEO, I guess, whatever, whatever he is. Um, but do we kind of sell that as a package with the server training with that? You could. Absolutely, you could. Um, right. Server training does cover forensic scanners and fake IDs and things like that. And uh, it would be a good training for them to have. I wouldn't doubt if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe your casino has a required server training of sorts. So check okay. with them to see if they're doing anything with the server training. Um, and then you can talk to them about the forensic ID scanners and things like that. But it might be a good idea to ask them because a lot of them use that national tips uh, curriculum and it doesn't cover a lot of state law. 
So like to, to Robin's point, it might be really good to cover some of the state laws about what IDs are approved for the sale of alcohol and tobacco, what are not approved and, and things like that. So uh, cool. in the least, your, your server training should cover the state laws. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and if you need any help with that, just let us know, Hank, because if you want us to come and help with the forensic scanner or to help demo it, we can do that. Uh, but just the best thing to do is watch that video um, okay. that I sent out. It's kind of the demonstration video that covers pretty much everything on how to use those scanners. But I have like the real fake ideas and things like that that we could bring in to show them what they're dealing with. Well, thank you. Yeah. Anything else, you guys? Okay, well, if there are no more questions, we'll let you go. I know you guys have some busy schedules, so. If any questions come up, you guys just contact us. You know how to get a hold of us, email, call, whatever you got to do. Okay. Other than that, we'll see everyone in a couple weeks. Yep, looking forward to seeing you guys. All right, cool. All right, Thanks, good day. everyone. Bye. Yep, take care.